Wise Way Learning presents the lecture number, 43, under section 8. This is a complete project management free course from beginner to project manager with 19 sections of 100 lectures. Welcome to the course. Section 8 and lecture number 43, the planning phase, changing process. This section includes the lecture such as how to deal with and record change requests. Section 8 and lecture number 43, how to deal with and record change requests. Have you ever started something only to find out halfway through that there's been a better way to do it all along? Sure, we all have. Before the spoon was invented, everyone ate soup with a fork. Of course, in a project, frequent changes will incur excessive costs for budget, scope, quality or time. And the project manager tries to eliminate as much of this cost as possible with a detailed plan. But a good project manager is also not stubborn and will adapt to change. Basically, it's the project manager's job to limit the need for changes on one hand and on the other to efficiently manage the changes in a way that the project could benefit. Now let's discuss. First is what we've been doing in the course so far, limiting the potential for change through comprehensive planning. By using the methods we've been discussing, any project manager will miss fewer details in the execution phase and therefore will not need to make any changes. If they do need to make changes though, a project manager should implement a change control process. Before moving to execution, it must be agreed how to make changes, and as with most parts of the planning process, needs to be established. So let's go through one. The thing that will start the process is a change being requested, and that request needs to be analysed. What are the benefits of the change? what is needed in order to implement the change, and what is its impact on the project. Of course, a formal document must be created to collect this data, a change request form. The project manager must understand the proposal, fill in the form and then send it for approval. Who will the project manager send the change request form to? The project sponsor, of course. Since they have provided the needed resources, they should also determine if the additional needs are worth it. If the project manager has concluded that the change will benefit the project, then they must convince the project sponsor. There may even be cases where there is no benefit to the project and it has simply fallen behind, meaning changes to the project need to be made just to reach the original goal. It is possible for a project to be cancelled if the additional resources are substantial and the project no longer has positive value. This reinforces the fact that detailed planning is vital. Now. Let's say the changes are of benefit to the project and the sponsor approves the change request. Then the project manager must replan and update the project plan and assess where areas are impacted and how. Is it the schedule that's impacted, or the budget, scope, resources, quality, or is it all of them? Using the same methods which we discussed, the project manager must reassess these areas, factoring in the new information. It is worth noting that the project manager will be the one to decide if a project that's proposed needs to actually go through this rigorous process. For example, a team member requesting a couple of days off will not cost additional resources and will be covered by the buffer, so it doesn't require a lengthy process at all. Remember that the scope statement is a project manager's shield. If a stakeholder challenges the project manager by saying a certain aspect was not what they expected, then the project manager can take out their detailed scope statement and counter the challenge. However, if the stakeholder has a point and something crucial is missing, then the process is likely to be initiated. So there we have it. The planning is complete. Congratulations. It's not been easy, but now we have a solid, detailed project plan, including the fundamentals of scope, time and cost, as well as the not so obvious expectations, assumptions and risks. We've planned how we will communicate and we've put things in place to prepare for any changes that may occur. And what did we learn about planning? We learned that if a project manager wants to complete the project successfully with time and budget, then they must put sufficient time, attention and effort into the planning. The more things they miss, the higher the chance of changes and backtracking. Which, of course, 
will cause delays and harm to the project. Planning involves many non-straightforward tasks, which means the project manager must deal with various stakeholders to get the information to build solid assumptions and plans. Both of these fit into the fact that planning is iterative. New information about changes can come to light, meaning the project manager may have to go back and update plans. We also learned that the project manager is responsible for understanding the project, identifying the important sections and investing the appropriate amount of time to plan each section and consider all dependencies. They must uncover all available data and engage different stakeholders to obtain information critical for planning. Of course, they must also perform all planning work with sufficient breadth and depth. Once they have identified the expectations for a project, they must resolve any discrepancies. And finally, they must finalize and formalize the plan and present it to the project sponsor for approval. That is the point when they can finally move on to the execution, just like we are about to do now.